<laughs> developing faster um, than ever, and society isn't always quick enough to adopt. And I'm trying to, I, I want to work on the problems, problems that that creates. So. Hi, I'm Tobias Goebel, German born, uh, living in the US now, I have been for eight years. I am a technologist at heart, but I'm a marketer uh, as a day job. Uh, with that brings some interesting perspectives on you know things that are happening out there. I work for Aspect. Uh, my title is Senior Director Emerging Technologies, uh, which means that I look at you know new stuff, uh, new technology. I try to put it in the big picture, try to see what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Uh, AI is currently a hot topic, obviously, so uh, one, of, one of my big uh, focus areas right now is chatbots, which to me is fascinating because I have a background, academic background, in computational linguistics. So I studied that um, in 1997 at Bonn University in Germany and then Edinburgh University as well. And uh, 20 years, 15 years, fast forward, and we now finally have uh, technology out there that can talk back to us, which uh, is what we had always dreamed of back then. I'm excited about the fact that some of the technology that, that I had worked on you know, with, with my student fellows at the time and colleagues at the time in the 90s finally reaches a mass market and reaches mass market adoption and excitement. Um, so we suddenly see solutions out there live that you know we just could dream of at the time, uh, specifically around teaching computers how to talk. Uh, that's that's been an area of fascination for me for for as long as I can think. I've always had a, a knack for language and the structure of language, and I've always had a, a knack for computers and programming them and teaching them human ways. And a big way and, and a big part of our DNA is speaking and talking and listening and conversing. So now being able to sit on the couch in my house and uh, you know saying Alexa turn on the lights or you know get an Uber for me and have a short dialogue with her. We're at the beginnings of that but it's an exciting journey and what I find exciting is that I have the opportunity to um, in, you know in my day job to uh, not only work with that technology and on that technology but also kind of explain it to others and help them understand the potential for it. I think challenges are um, that people might overestimate what the technology can really do. There is a misperception which has been fueled by both science fiction uh, in you know movies and, and writing and books as well as overzealous vendors that promise you the world and then can't deliver. Um, that's a risk that I try to you know, counter by, by being very transparent and honest about what the technology can do. It has its merit, it has its enormous potential, but you have to know how to use the tool right, like with any tool. And um, you don't want to kind of lead your customers in the wrong direction, as otherwise you're burning the market, which has happened as, you know, those of us who have researched AI for a while know that, you know, it has in the past several times the so-called AI winters, which were phases where you know, back in the 60s, people overpromised. Oh, well, we'll have machine translation. We'll have you know computers that talk to us in just a decade. And here we are, you know, 50 years later, and we're scratching the surface of those systems becoming reality. Do we have too much technology? There is a risk of that. Um, I read a super interesting article this morning from a Georgia professor, Georgia Tech professor, I think Bo Professor Bogus, who wrote an article in The Atlantic, who talked about how it's pretty much too late already, how we essentially already live inside of our computers, where we do things mediated by computers that we aren't even consciously aware of anymore. And he, he listed examples like, you know, friends of a certain age no longer ring the doorbell to say I'm here, but texting the person, hey, can you come down, I'm in front of your house. So they're basically mediating you know, anal analog ways of interacting through a computer interface, and they're not really consciously doing it. They're, they're subconsciously, they're not aware that's what they're doing, really. And a lot of you might have seen this, um, this animated GIF or this video of how the, the desk, the working desk of a 1980s, 1990s workstation with your calendar and your calculator and all these devices, a camera and you know, an alarm clock, everything sitting on your desk got reduced to essentially now having a laptop and a smartphone that basically 
represent all of these you know, analog functions and functionalities as icons and as apps on the phone. And there is a risk of overdoing it at the cost of certain human elements, uh, human interaction elements, which I think we want to be aware of. I do what I do because I'm driven by seeing others come to the same understanding that I come to when I dive into something new and try to understand it and try to you know, dive deep but then bubble back up to see the bigger picture. I always like to stay on top and have the bigger picture. If I can you know, show my customers the opportunity of, of the stuff we're doing, if I can show my partners um, in business, if I can just show my, my friends uh, why this is exciting and also kind of at the same time keep that you know, almost childlike perspective on the world of like, hey, this is cool, you know, I'm discovering something new, I have a childlike passion for it. Um, and I'm being given a lot of freedom um, at work, uh, which I'm very thankful. And um, people, for whatever reason, um, pay attention and listen to me when I say things, so that's cool. Um, I love recognition, who doesn't? Um, and, and that is what makes me do these things, I think.